Right, so form finding with GSA tense cable nets and grid shells. Um, obviously form finding. Form finding is quite an advanced, um, nice option. Um, I mean, why form finding? I mean, the architects. The architects say that um, form follows function, but we're engineers. We we know that form follows force. Majority buildings, yeah, that there's not too much optimization to be done apart from you know with a beam like like this where you you work out the uh, the lightest weight or the shallowest section that the, 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 to, 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 to carry the loads. But apart from that, and there's not too much to be done there, but when you get on to sort of roofs and long span structures and so on um, you've got a little bit more flexibility and therefore a lot more opportunity to do something quite light and elegant and efficient such as this fabric roof at the Eden project um, in, 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 in Cornwall. Note the span is about the same as the steel beam previously but the weight is considerably less Now, lightweight structures um, tend to resist load not by uh, their sort of physical size, like like like, like beams do, but um, through their their overall shape, um, such as you know these 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 curved surfaces, through the pre-stress, um, the pre-tension that you put, you put into them, and also through large deflections, they are typically very flexible structures. But that flexibility is actually their strength as well. Now, <coughs> tent type structures have been with us for thousands of years, but it was probably not until um, Fry Otto at, and his Munich Olympics in 1972 that the structural application of tent type structures really came to the fore, where he, he, he combines both architecture and engineering together to, to form this. Um, Quite wonderful uh, roof structures for for, for, the Olymp for the Olympic Games. Uh, the Olympics is quite a theme, really, for these sort of lightweight structures. Now, in 1972, obviously, um, there was computing available, uh, but in quite a primitive form, and certainly nothing sophisticated enough to 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 do the analysis on these sort of structures. So there, that they were using. Um, physical mo models to work out the, the geometries and then um, hand calculations to to, to approximate the, the forces. Um, I think these days we'll probably be able to get the, the, those sort of um, the struts you can see there in the image maybe a little, little bit more slender but definitely a wonderful building. Talking of struts and compression structures, I mean compression structures you know, generally columns just go straight up and down or up or down depending on the way you view them not much scope for creativity or, or optimization but actually they can do um, now here we have a couple of examples from Antonio Gaudi this is he is he, is he is he is he Sagrada Familia and the Colón de Guel um, cathedrals in in Spain both of these, um, Gaudi designed these cathedrals not to work on the um, the Gothic method of flying buttresses to, to resist the horizontal loads to keep to keep to keep the columns vertical, but by angling the columns over so they carry carry both the vertical and diagonal loads directly. And he did this by using hanging chain models such as you see on the right there. End result. Well, this is this is this is. Uh, that's a grand familiar, and you can see the uh, the end result is very elegant, very organic, quite different to um, the cathedrals that we might be more more familiar with. But you notice, of course, these these stone columns are not vertical; they are angled over to carry the load directly. Now, it's like more recent example again, again from Spain. This is the Spanish um, Seville Expo from '92. Um, these are ungrouted stone stone units and they are held together purely by the pretension um, induced by the, those those uh, attention rods and just to say you know, when you get 
the shape and the pre-stress right on this structure so you can cre create some quite slender elegant structures another example this is uh, Robert Mylart's um, cement hall from 1939 um, in, in Zurich um, I'm not sure the exact dimensions, but you can see the man on the bridge there um, to get the scale. So it's about 20 meters tall and thickness of not a lot um, in, in reinforced concrete. And you can see because it is this um, parabola, parabolic shape with some stiffness over the bridge section, it's able to span that distance with very little concrete. So, all about the form. So, how do we find the form, and what do we get from form finding? Well, one thing I note with these lightweight structures is they are all um, or invariably double curved, and certainly with <coughs> dealing with uh, fabric structures, double curvature is absolutely essential. There are three basic forms um, for for these double curvatures. There's the conic the barrel and, and the hyper and obviously they are uh, the real structures will be sort of um, a variation on these three main yeah, main main themes also in dealing with compression structures such, such as the arch arches there uh, if you get the the geometry right through the, through form finding you can achieve um, an arch which is very slender uh, but yet still resilient to, to, to buckling um, of course yeah, in this case the buckling is also being resisted by the um, the cable net or fabric there and they're all working together to, to, to give a finely balanced structure now form finding will give you the the geometry and 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 Part of that geometry then feed into the fabrication process. You notice on on this this fabric structure. This is the Marseillaise sculpture in the Tate Modern. Um, you have the the fabric cutting patterns. So the the strips of fabric, which which are, which are, are cut in maybe in sort, a sort of a tapering type form, which you then when you, when you fix them together, you then get that 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 the, the conic. Sorry. Another important thing to get out from the form finding is the pre-stress. Now, how you get the pre-stress into the fabric structures or cable nets um, is is crucial to 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 the final form. Now, if you get the pre-stress wrong, yeah, the pre-stress is out of balance. You will get what they call uh, Huygens tension fields or or um, yeah, wrinkles uh, in your fabric picture on the left is actually during during um, erection of, of, of the Marseillaise sculpture but you can see uh, when you get the, the pre-stress in both directions correct you get a lovely smooth surface uh, when it's when it's not correct when it's out, out of balance you will get wrinkles which are very obvious uh, in the fabric structure form finding can also be used for um, cable net or t this is the case. This is a tensegrity structure. This is um, the Khalifa Bridge down in Brisbane, um, and so due to um, restraints or constraints on the construction, the, the bridge had to be built in sort of a double cantilever form, and the two parts of the bridge would then would then meet in the middle. And of course, the cables were fixed length, so there was no option. For, for for adjustment and there no no turnbuckles, and uh, GSA form finding was used to determine the the unloaded cable lengths. So so so, so, so the end result was that the two parts of which did actually meet in the middle. It was obviously used then for the subsequent static and dynamic analyses on there as well. GSA uses. A, um, a non-linear method called dynamic relaxation in its GS Relax solver. So GSA actually contains a number of solvers, linear solvers, non-linear, dynamic, and so on. The um, 
the, the non-linear solve is called GS Relax. Some old hands might remember the name of Fablon, which was um, incorporated it into GSA as GS Relax. And they used a method co co called dynamic relaxation, which I'll explain what that means in a moment. And it's used in quite a few parts in, in GSA. I mean, there's the geometric and non-linear um, aspects in the non-linear static. There's the non-linear member buckling. And there's also the form finding, which of course is the crucial thing we're looking at now. So dynamic relaxation, what's it all about? It's it's not a it's not a matrix method like, like you use for um ordinary static analysis. It is literally it's sort of equations of motion and equilibrium. What we're looking for is equilibrium positions in the model. When so everything is moving around and you get the initial sort of unbalanced position so um, the tensions it, in those cables there are out of balance with with, 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 the, with the gravity loads on, on this force and because they're out of balance you get a residual force and because you get a force you get an acceleration and therefore you get movement and what we're looking for is the equilibrium position in the middle so the forces are all in balance but um, as it happens, at that when the structure is at that point during the analysis, is actually moving quite fast. Now, because it's moving, we have to apply damping into um, into the analysis. Now, we went into this a little bit more detail in the last webinar, but basically, there is damping we need to, to to force the structure to sort of converge onto the equilibrium position. And there's viscous damping and kinematic damping and so on and Sometimes one option will give you better option results, sometimes the other will. Now, GS Relax is very good at large deflections, not nonlinearity, much better than, say, uh, Newton Raphson methods. I mean, uh, most nonlinear programs can deal with, sort of, example at the top, where you've got a, a three pin beam and so on, but GS Relax can also deal with mechanisms such as the pinned cantilever in the in, in the low image. So quick quick summary as we go as we go along. Um, using the GSA you can automatically get consideration of all geometric nonlinear effects, both geometric and material. It's able you're able to use it on a wide variety of structures, not just these sort of lightweight structures, but also more sort of rigid structures portal frames, steel frames, etc, etc, uh, and takes into account both the material and geometric modeling and buckling as well. Sometimes you'll find if you get the loads too high you won't get conversions because the structure is buckled. Something to watch out for. Right, form finding itself. In GSA we have a variety of soap form finding methods and these form finding methods are all about Finding a new shape for the structure, uh, which where the the loads and pre-stresses and constraints are all in equilibrium to each other. Now it's a special type of analysis. It doesn't produce reactions and deflections uh, and moments and so on as normal analysis does. What it does instead is it produces a new geometry. It moves the structure around and it can also produce um, pre-stress loads for you. And the idea is, is the, uh, the pre-stress will then be pre-stress will be in equilibrium um, with with the constraints. Now we have three methods in GSA for, for, for achieving this. There is the soap film, the force density, and the normal properties. And we'll um, we'll, we'll look into each each of these three in detail in a moment mentioned about boundary conditions or constraints um, you do need to make sure the boundary conditions are set in your in your fabric um, and cable net models I mean fabrics typically you need to edge them either with a, a fixed edge such as the, um, the circle the section there on the left or a, a cable on, on the right um, now with, with, this, with the beam um, 
that you, you just pin the edge with, with, with the cables you, you, you'd be specifying a, a tension in those cables which will then be achieve a balance with the tension in the fabrics so soap film method first soap film possibly the best form finding method in, in GSA but also firstly um, can be the um, the, 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 the trick is to use. I mean, it gives you more power and flexibility, but it gives you more responsibility as well. The basic method or concept behind the soap film form finding is that it's a mathematical model of a soap film, as you might guess from the name. So fabrics are treated as basically bubbles, and the bubble has a stress but no stiffness. And likewise, cables. Um, again have a stress but no stiffness and so essentially like uh, rubber bands now because um, the stress are constant but the there's no stiffness the the nodes are actually free to move anywhere and we have to sort of take control of those of, of the position of nodes to make sure they behave themselves and we use special elements in in the soap film called spacers now spaces are the type of element where they're actually, they're actually a chain. So if you look, look at the option on top, you see this spacer is made up of a number of spacer elements. These all have the same property; they're all going in the same direction, and so on. And these all form one spacer together, uh, and they will typically try and keep the nodes equally spaced out or whatever. Now. They, there are also unacceptable settings for this, so option below, you can't have a spacer which has a break in it. This part would have to have one property, this part would have to have another property. Likewise, you can't have um, a split or a fork or bifurcation if you want, in the spacer. Again, you'd have to have at least two separate properties on this. As GSA is the large displacement analysis, we only need to get the initial st geometry approximately correct, apart from the, the, the boundary conditions. So you can see on this high par, I've pinned the the f the, f the four corners and lifted two of the corners up. Also specified that the the cable edge with its pre with its pre-stress, and you then get the resulting high par surface. Note the um, in the balance between the cable pre-stress and the fabric pre-stress, you get the the dip, um, and yeah, reduce the cable stress, you get a larger dip, and so on. So it's all about. Um, so you might need to run the form binding a number of times until you could get could get the shape that, that you want. So this is a saddle or a barrel um, structure, and here we have. For, for the barrel parts, we have um, pinned the, the nodes on, on the two arches, but got a cable cable edges on the other two sides. And the end result is this sort of um, saddle shape. Note with this one, uh, I had a, a higher pre-stress set in the x direction to the y direction, which gives us a more sort of um, pulled up shape. If you have the two stresses constant. This will sag down an awful lot further, and that's one advantage of the soap film method is you can have different pre-stresses in the in in the two, 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 two directions. You can also do form finding with 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 pressures. Now, if you're doing um, ETFE cladding and so on with inflated shapes, you will need to do this. And basically, you include a pressure in the form find, which then generates you the sort of inflated. Or initial inflated shape. One example, um, a few years ago now, um, Beijing Olympics, the, the water cube, and here the um, G GSA was used to to, to 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 form find the ETFE cladding, and then for um, for for subsequent loading as well. ETFE, okay, it, it can yield uh, under. Uh, under the inflation loads, but but for the, for the large panels, 
the the yielding would be, would have been excessive and actually damaged da damage the foil. So you had to um, do the cutting patterns on the ETFE for the large panels first before the sort of the um, inflation up to service loads. Yeah. Interesting for the for the the GSA analysis of, of of these pillows, you don't actually need to model all three sheets. You only need to model one sheet. And of course, the uh, the wind loads are then always coming. See if I'm analyzing this right hand sheet, wind loads come from the left. So your wind loads and the pressure loads for the overall effects. End result well, I think Water Cube won over eight major international awards. And it's quite interesting as well to note that whilst it looks quite random, there are only about a dozen different um, panels in there. And if you look close as well, you can also see the um, the ETFE panels in there as well. Another shape, conics. Conics are interesting. Is that they have to have a higher radial pre-stress, in general at least, um, to, uh, to ensure that that, that that they don't neck during during form finding. Necking means that rather than having this sort of nice curve, the curve actually goes up into the middle and back out again. And when it touches the middle, the bubble w w will burst and you won't get convergence on, on, on the form binding. Note also that you do have to have a ring support at the top. Classic beginner mistake is to, is to take this up to a point. Point supports in conics will invariably mean that um, the form binding will fail because the fabric will neck at the top. Now here we have an unusual example, a mistly, but one I rather like. This is the um, this is a conic structure from the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the exhibition at Liquid Skies. This is actually a a mylar conic fabric, and you can see the edge cables and the support supporting struts, and what appears to be a a toddler. Acting as a, 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 as ballast down the corner. Hope the wind doesn't blow. So, how do we go about doing the soap film? Let me change over to GSA now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a brand new model. And what I do first of all, I'll remember to add in a a fabric material. I'll just take the example values, but. You, you can get your own from materials and um, manufacturers details and I'm going to use the wizard to create this structure for me um, I use the wizard because it will create the spaces um, and um, you don't really want to have to watch me do that well, let's make it let's get five meters square and say half meter panels I specify my 2d elements as being fabric elements and I use uh, fabric material and because fabric elements have no thickness they have therefore have no self weights and therefore I'll need to add in some self weights at this point. We also need the spaces so we have both the internal spaces which are geodesic so these will constrain the nodes to remain on the surface of the fabric. We also have edge spaces to, to um, in, in, in line, line with the ties. Now we often call them cables. Cables, uh, if, you, if you saw the last webinar, are slightly different to ties, so they are a special thing in GSA. Um, but um, basically we do need a, um, edge spaces on the, uh, along the line of the ties, which I'll specify as ties there. And just give them, let's say, a, a 5mm diameter cable there. So there is my basic structure. Let me just save this onto the desktop and I'll call it um, fabric. And we're gonna, I'm going to do something like um, let me switch the nose on, like the high part, but it's slightly more complex. And I'm going to do first of all, um, nope, modify. pin those corners and I'm going to take these two corners here and I'm going to move them up 
by two meters. So as I'll pull up. So this will form a high pass surface. But as I said, that's, that's a bit too easy. Let's do something that's slightly more involved. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to extrude those back down to form posts. Excellent. And if I switch on my snap grid, what I'll do is I'll just add in some backstay cables as well. Now, I call these cables. Let me just, these are actually going to be ties. Let me just pin those points there. Now, no, um, if you feel I'm going too quick, I am recording this, this, this webinar. And uh, we'll, we'll put it online in the next day or two. So, and being a video, you're able to pause it and slow it down as necessary. Now these two po top points up here, I'm going to free those actually rather than pin them. But I'm going to keep them restrained in the Z direction. So they're free to move horizontally but not vertically. Which during the form find otherwise if you, if you left these completely free, they would collapse. They, they would basically fall over horizontal because that then gives you a lower surface. Now, I also want to specify other parts, so um, let's specify the sections. So we've got edge, tie. Um, I'm going to copy that and give it um, backstay. And the last one I'll put in a post. Some sort of circular hollow section let's say a three inch diameter and let's allocate those so that one and that one I'm going to modify those and make those gonna be could be ties and they property number two so property number so property two is the back stays and these ones here are going to be beams but then property number three now the edge edge cables and the backstay cables are the same size but I've got them given different properties because I'm going to give them different pre-stresses and these pre-stresses come in the form finding section here now if you don't see form finding in your copy of GSA go to your tools preferences advanced features and make sure that it is switched on here so we're using a soap fill method. So soap fill 1D. This is for the for the, for the ties. And note that the the lines in this table match the lines in the section table. So um, form finding line one will match the um, the edge, and I'll say uh, pre-stress in those cables of 10 kilonewtons, and then the backstay. I'll give those. 20 kilonewtons to balance the, the the two cables coming in won't be exactly in balance to begin with because um, well they won't be going to begin with but they will be at the end now no I won't give a um, a pre-stress for, for these posts because um, that pre-stress in those will just come about as a result of the pre-stress from these cables so that's I'm not don't worry about that. Now I also need a pre-stress in the fabric and just for example I'll just give a constant pre-stress in the two directions from here and I'm going to call it. Now I think that might be enough to get us started. So if I've remembered everything I can now do a form finding analysis. Let's call it. I'll use a soap film rather than these four things we're ignoring. I'll create a dummy load case. I'm just form finding the geometries, I'm not worried about additional loads in that moment. Show progress and now I've been finding at the moment that the artificial damping seems to be working better at the moment, but um, actually no, use it, use, it, use it for viscous. So end result, modify no coordinates, that's what we want. And we also get the form finding forces which then become pre stress loads, which is also what. So here we have 
the resultant optimum structure. And if we look from the side, and um, other way, we can see that these posts here are pulled over slightly towards the magnet, imbalancing the forces from the cables on two sides. Now, to our pre-stresses. Here are our pre-stress loads, and what we want now we want these pre-stress loads in these cables, but don't want them in the posts. That's that's a fake one. I'll just reduce the display down to those posts, and I'll just use the sculpt tool to delete displayed loading. So I'll just remove the pre-stresses from those posts, and I'll also remove the restraint from those. So these are these are now free to move. We now we're going to start loading up and do a static analysis on this. So, static analysis, what we need to do is to find some loads. So let's just pull up clarity, do some, um, give some names first. So, call it um, snow. And it is snowing here at the moment. And some wind loads. So, Gravity loads, easiest one. Just pick up the self weight. And face loads on the fabric. Property area one, which are um, all my 2D elements. Snow, which is going to be global, it is going to be projected, it's going to be uniform in the direction minus 0.6. And I'm going to do some wind load, which is going in the local direction, not projected. Let's just say one. So the loading we now get dead load, snow load, and if we look elevation, we can see that it is there, and it will be reducing with um, angle. And the wind load element is at right angles to the element. In fact, make that deformed local. So that the wind will actually follow the fabric as it moves. That can be a risky move. It, the form locals can result in the fabrics popping. So obviously, if the element starts to enlarge, the wind load will enlarge, and so on. So use with caution, but um, might be worthwhile just leaving it as local load to begin with to make, make sure that things are working. So let's do analysis. So I'm going to do nonlinear static. Again, it's using the dynamic relaxation, but a different option. I'm going to create my load. Now, because it's nonlinear, I have to do um, the loads combined. So, load snow with dead with, intent with the pre stress. And I do wind. Note we can also put factors in here as well if you want. But at the moment, I'm using working, working loads. In view now, I will. I did find the artificial damping seems to be working slightly better. So let's run that. So it's just analyzing. Is it? See the numbers here. This it, th these numbers should, should be reducing as it uh, as it converges to the final answer. And there we have the two cases have converged. Now that's magnification of 10. Let me just double click on the screen and reduce that down to 1 to 1 because fabrics move around quite a lot anyway. So here we have the wind loads. Let me look at the deflections on this. So wind's moving about 400 mil. Snow's dropping down about 300 and you can see it's probably not quite basically it's getting close to ponding um in there now ponding obviously is a big danger for fabric structures so let me look at that so you can see ponding effects if you look if you use the deformed elevation and in fact if i go to a line contour and um increase or make them closer maybe a bit closer Um, let me just switch off the uh, spacer display. PG1 to PG star. 
and we can see there that um, if we were going to get ponding, we, you, you would get an, sort of an island showing in in, in these contours, which I'm going to say we're not getting. Now, apart from these, we also get. Um, let's go for the projected forces. So let's. Um, Um, warp direction force, weft or fill direction force, um, shear forces and so on and then of course you can then envelope these and so on as you want. So that's soap film. Summary on this. You do need to make sure that you have space elements in there with, with the soap film. And you specify cable cable pre-stresses in terms of actual load, and also fabric pre-stresses in terms of actual load. And you can have pre-stresses in two different directions on the fabrics. Next comes force density. Now, force density. is a method is a little bit simpler than the soap film though it doesn't give you quite as much control quite often used for cable nets can also be used for fabrics as well quite often used in the in sort of the cheaper form finding programs and the method is slightly different in that um you don't use spaces but instead the um the resultant element sizes are in proportion to the applied load and the force density. So take this example here, these three elements with the same force on there and but different force densities, the end result is that um, they end up with different lengths. And you can see if you multiply each of these numbers together you still get, end up with, with 30. So um, can be easy to do but not necessarily quite so logical but very good for sort of cable net type structures. Let me show you how to use a force density method then. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to GSA, let me just tuck this away and I'm going to create a new model here. Actually let me just um, just say that to make sure, sure we've got the copy. So I'm going to create a brand new blank model. No, you, no need for the wizard this time. And I'm going to use the snap grid just to help me along. And I'm just set my defaults. Just to make sure I'm set to ties. So I'm going to draw. Shrink. Um, I'm going to draw in a 10 meter long tie, and I'm just going to grab that and I'm going to split it down into one meter pieces. Let me switch. See there is the there is my snap grid. Uh, there's my elements. And I'm going to select all those and I'm going to copy them up by a couple of meters and I'm just going to modify those to being property 2. I haven't defined this property yet. Um, but I will also, before I forget, pin those endpoints. Now I'll set drawing the diagonals. Now those who've used this graphical tool, um, I'm holding the control down so I can carry on drawing. I believe release control. I think it then finishes. So it's making sure I don't snap to the middle of the cables and then I just select everything and copy that over a couple of meters on the diagonal make sure I'm in my fourth and uh, property and I'm just going to close that away and draw a volume just to give me the show the bottom part with a plan and let's draw in last parts. Bum, bum, bum. 
Okay, so that should be, let me just check, by property by colour, yep, everything's up in the various properties. Now let's set up the, the properties for um, what they actually mean. So these properties, I'm going to use just 5mm cables everywhere, and since this is just copy that. So, not to worry about the size, but, but I've got four separate properties, and like the soap film, the four lines here will match the four lines in the section table. So I'm um, say, let's say, this is the bottom cable, and then there's the top cable. I'll give it a much lower force density, so that's it's forced to curve more, and then the diagonals a reasonably low value. And that should then be enough to run a force density form find again dummy loads in that case and instantly we have solution modify coordinates include the pre-stresses and there we have our resulting shape with the optimized geometry. Now let's have a look at the pre stress as well. Now, uh, remember, we. Now, where was my force density? Let me just tuck that down the bottom. So, annotate all those and let's have a look at the property being one. You can see with pre stress of force density of 40, and these are about one meter long. Um, so they've got pressure of about 40 as they get longer, they increases. Upper cables, 10, so long ones. Are, yeah, and you can see the pre-stresses are in proportion to the element length at the end. And then of course, once you have that, you can then do the static analysis as before. Save that. Uh, So that's a fourth density method. And summary on that. No need for spaces. And light like to film define not the pre not the, the pre stresses but the fourth densities that you want on the elements, both the one D and the two D elements. But note with the two D you've only got the one fourth density option. There's no differential pre stress in fourth density. Now, the third method in, in GSA is called normal properties or ignoring form finding properties because it doesn't use the form finding properties, it just uses the element stiffnesses themselves. And what you do is then create large scale permanent deflections on the structure from, fr from an applied load. Now, this is a good method for creating um, compression type structures, i.e., uh, the these these domes and the arches also very good for things which are slightly more complex such as grid shells and this is the Mannheim World Garden exhibition um, and you can see because the edge conditions are quite varied the resulting geometry is quite organic and you can see for in this timber lattice just how thin thin the structure is and this uses is this is all the it's it's small but um, bending capacity, but also the double curvature shape to resist the wind and, and snow loads. Now, because again, this is a 1970s structure, um, the um, hanging chain methods, modern grid shells um, will tend to use analyses such as GSA, either, either soap film or the normal properties. I'll show you how to do it with the normal property methods. Normal property counts are used for actual shells, you know, vaulted shells and so on. Um, organic roofs uh, and a variety of, of shapes. 
So, let me show you how to do a shell structure. And what I'm going to do for the shell is, um, well, we haven't got two, um, we haven't got non-linear shells in GSA yet, um, though they are under development. So what I'm going to do instead is use a, a grillage of elements um, and I'm going to use those I'm going to, I'm, basically I'm going to form find a grillage and use those to for, um, to give me the the shell shape so let me take that let me copy that say 10 um, let's make it nine one meter other direction that's better and then copy that one again nine copies this time in the y direction and so we've got beams and shells in there now let's actually define these sections so I'm gonna say let's say some sort of long-term I'm going to say rectangular, some nominal size for, for the grillage part, and but for the shell part, we're going to use the uh, the final shape. So let's say long-term conflict, 100 mil thick. That's fine. No additional mass, and I'm going to differentiate these analysis by using construction stage. So. I'm going to do a form find stage just using the beam elements and then a static stage I'm just using the shell elements or the area elements now we need to put loads on these as well because we use the loads to create the deformations so gravity loads it's always the same let me give some names as well so we can see dead alive so the self weight I'm also going to create um, face loads on the 2D elements property area 1 let's take live load in the Z direction projected and it's minus 0.6 um, and what we then do uh, is also create grid load now I need to create a grid at that location so we now have a grid plane and so I can now do a grid area load on that location um, global direction it is projected Z direction minus 0.6 so we've got basically the same load on the grillage as we got on the shell And we need support points as well. Let's just take the middle points and pin those in position. And I think we should be ready to go. So let's do a form finding on the form find stage. Ignoring form finding properties. And the loads, dead and live, which we can apply the. Um, factors too but um, I can also apply a large negative factor onto these applied loads so these are my, my, my service loads and I'm inverting them and boosting them up so we then get resultant shape which should be a grid shell that's a little bit higher maybe but don't want to use um, pre-stresses in this case but the end result oh, is of our grid um, shell now if I um, see we've got the different stages there's, there's the grillage which I form found 
and there is the 2D elements which are followed. Now these, the static load on this, these these quad elements are currently too warped to analyse. Because what we really need is to break these down into triangles which are therefore not warped and will analyse with a static analysis. So what we can now do is a new analysis which is a static analysis on the shell part and we can do my dead and live and there are 1.35 1.5 um, load on these <coughs> that's analyzed and we then get the shape of not a lot how much movement we got less than a millimeter in the middle um, bending moments not very much at all um, it's mostly been taken in compression loads down into the uh, into into the corners so you can see we're, we've got an optimized optimized shell um, using the form finding so summary on that um, normal properties no spaces just use the ordinary structure properties and you achieve sort of deflections and you can use large loads achieve permanent deflections or you can just use ordinary loads to work out um, construction deformations and so on where it's been used recently <sighs> now the ODA has finally re lifted reporting restrictions we can now com reveal that GSA was used quite extensively on the London 2012 Olympics here is uh, Bureau Happel's main ma main stadium and, and GSA was used um, just like I support, so particularly the form finding on, on the roof structure. And you can see this is um, under construction. You can see, see the roof structure is essentially is this, this tension cable, a ring cable in the middle, which is then balanced out with horizontal cables to backstays and then then supporting the, the lighting rigs. Each of those lighting rigs is about 50 tonnes each. If you look in cross section, you can see that. Yeah, as you can see, the structure only works when it's, at, when it's actually complete. Um, it doesn't work as slices. So, so construction was quite tricky, and, and construction involved quite a few um, form finding cases as well. The fabric in in the case of the, the, the main stadium roof is basically cladding infill, um, so the cables were, were taking all the loads in this particular case. Another mo one you might be familiar with is the, the velodrome, um, not just a site of many Olymp Olympic gold medals but also um, ISTRAC-T gold medals as well, including the Supreme ISTRAC-T Award for Expedition Engineering back in, in 2011. The roof here is a, a, a high power cable net um, and you can see the, the cables in the one direction holding down or holding up the cables in the other and because it's double curves it resists b b b both the gravity loads and the wind loads to create a very light but yet very stiff structure there were some pure fabrics as well um, at the Olympics which were designed by, by, by GSA and this is Mott McDonald's sh sh shooting gallery where, where GSA was used for, for the fabric cladding well where next if you want to have a go at something similar yourself if you're an Arab or, or, or an existing GSA suite user uh, just make sure you activate the form finding in the GSA preferences if you're GSA user um, of a different GSA type speak to myself or Nick or my colleagues and we can organize a, a, a trial for you for, for the form finding and if you're not using GSA at all at the moment download GSA from from the website and then that will give you everything apart from the fabric and form finding and then speak to one of us 
and we can organize the uh, the trial trial license for you